guys, welcome back to my channel. This is my June favorites video. This is my first month on YouTube, so a lot of these have been uses solely in the month of June, but a lot of them have been like just super favorites that I've owned for a while that I've been using every single day. Let's just get started. In no particular order, I'm just gonna start grabbing random things, all right? Benefit Cabral. This stuff is so freaking good, guys. I've been trying this out for uh, at least a month, if not longer. Um, it's a nice perk of working at Sephora, but it's, again, it's just a brow pomade, and I have shades four and five. I usually do a darker brow, but I've been loving four lately, which is what I'm wearing today. Yeah, and it comes, it's awesome because the way it comes is packaged like this. You take the top off, pull out, <laughs> flip back in and then you have this tiny little brush. It is so fantastic. I like faking little brow hairs if you don't have a lot like myself. So been loving that. Next is this Bye Bye Pores Loose Face Powder by It Cosmetics. Um, just a translucent face powder. Bye Bye Pores is the perfect name. It really is because whenever I put it on, especially in the center of my face, it just smooths everything over and I have really large pores. So this helps to make them look not as large. If you have large pores, you need this. My next product is the NARS Liquid Laguna Bronzer. I know everyone raves about the powder, which is also a beautiful bronzer, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it's the fact that I'm so new to liquid bronzers, but this stuff looks so natural. I wear mine um, by putting it on with a wet beauty blender and just sponging it in like the areas that you bronze and it just looks so natural. I never thought I would like like liquid anything aside from like my concealer and foundation and this stuff is repurchasable. My next product is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. I'm done. I will repurchase this all the time. I have to mix two of these colors, which kind of sucks because I have the lightest, which is classic ivory, and the second lightest, which is shell beige. Ivory is a little bit too light, shell beige is a little bit too dark, so I mix the two and it makes my perfect shade. But this has oil control, and I use this in conjunction for one with a mattifying um, moisturizer and a mattifying primer. And I can rock an eight hour shift and keep a pretty matte face. The only place I really experience a lot of shine is the tip of my nose, and I think most of it's just my highlight because sometimes I go a little excessive, like today. If you have oily skin, even if you have normal skin, I would recommend this. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers with dry skin that love this, but sometimes they say it can cling to their dry patching. I don't know. Oily skin, I definitely recommend though. Another face product is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Bronzer. They have um, another one that is lighter than this, I assume. It's called Light Bronze. And <sighs> this literally smells like a beach. Like, if you were to mix uh, like sunscreen and like tanning oil and like sand. This is the perfect neutral bronzer. It is not too red, it is not too orange, and it's not ashy. So I'm pretty fair and I love this on my skin tone. It is stunning. I guess we'll just keep in the flow of face powders, face products. This is the Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Duo in one. I know everyone writes about the two, which is the gold highlight. I don't know how I went so long without this. This is such a stunning highlight, guys. Um, especially if you're really fair, you're gonna love it. It's got like some pinky opalescent tones to it. I haven't actually used the bronzer side yet. I'll try it out eventually, but I bought this for the highlighter. And it's really nice and smooth. And it's really pigmented. My next highlighter, I do use it as an eyeshadow, which is what it's meant for, Kat Von D Thunderstruck. I have been on the hunt for this. Um, Blonde Man, I think that's her Instagram name, she's been using this in a lot of her, like for her highlighting in like a lot of her Instagram posts. I commented and I was like, what the hell is on your cheekbones? And she was like, girl, it is Thunderstruck by Kat Von D. And I was like, I need that highlighter. It's actually an eyeshadow. It's a pretty large eyeshadow, 22 bucks, not too bad. It's also got like a pink tone, a little bit of a yellow tone. It has white in there as well. <sighs> you wet this with some MAC Fix Plus and they will see you from outer space. Trust. This face palette I am going to mention very, very briefly because 
I don't know if it's actually sold out online. It's definitely been sold out at my Sephora for a very long time. And that is the Jaclyn Hill Face Palette. Honestly, I don't know how they made this $52. Because these are almost full-size highlighters. And to me, these are the best highlighters on the market. They are triple milled powders. So they are so soft. They almost feel like you're dipping into a cream when you first like swatch it with your finger. And they have a really awesome color selection in just like their plain shimmering skin perfectors anyways. Um, they have, of course, the Jaclyn Hills Champagne Pop, which was her original baby. And then she did um, make another highlight, which is Prosecco Pop, which she calls Liquid Gold. It's a pretty appropriate name. My favorite blush in this has been this brownie nude shade, which is honestly, it's my favorite color to wear anyways. And then I am also in love with Rose Spritz, like a coral blush, very luminous. I'm gonna go into eyes. I just have a couple of eyeshadow palettes here. This one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. I've been getting so much use out of this. I'm usually that person who will buy a palette just because like I need it. <laughs> And I will use it like once and then I will move on to another palette because I have so many eyeshadows and I'm doing the 100 days of makeup challenge over on my Instagram. So I'm constantly trying to make up new looks every day and I feel like I have to use a different palette to do that which is so untrue. I've created so many looks with this bad boy and they don't look anything alike. These are stunning. I am so, so happy they decided to make this a permanent item of the collection because Anastasia always makes her palettes limited edition. It's their best one yet. It is stunning. I will admit it's a little bit powdery. I do get a lot of kick up, like of dust when I dip my brush in. And you can see like bristle marks where you do put your brush in. But other than that, they are super pigmented. They are really blendable. It's actually what's on my eyes today. And I can't take credit for this look because it is literally a replication of Kathleen Light's most recent tutorial. And then my next eyeshadow palette is one that I made. <laughs> um, if you've ever heard of the Z palettes, you can ignore these. These are blushes. Um, but these are Makeup Geek eyeshadows. And I've been obsessing over them for three years. I've owned them for about three years. And these are top notch quality. If you do not have Makeup Geek shadows, these are six bucks a pop. Um, she does have foiled shadows that are $10 each, which are well worth the price. They are stunning. But these are, this is my neutral palette. I do have a colored palette as well. This is the one that I reach for almost every single day. But I love Z palettes because you can really customize it to whatever the hell you want. Standouts though, for sure, Chickadee. It's like a yellowy orange. Togo Bear, really, really warm brown. Corrupt. The blackest eyeshadow that I own, I'm pretty sure. Okay, onto eyeliners. I have to talk about these heavy metal glitter liners from Urban Decay. Um, I have Midnight Cowboy, which is the gold, and Glam Rock, which is the silver. And I did purchase these because of Nikki Tutorials raving about them. Uh, she's right. These are amazing. I've been a fan of the NYX glitter liners for a long time, but they burn my eyes. And these do not, which is nice. They are more pricey, but... They're such good quality, and these are something that you could add onto the lid to make a glittery lid, inner corner, lower lash line, and they do have like purples and blues and like a green one, so these are definitely worth checking out. More eyeliners. These are the Sephora Collection 24 Hour Wear Colorful Eyeliner, waterproof. And these are waterproof. The first time I wore these, I bought one, I brought it home, I wore it to work. I came home and I was using the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. And I was using that to remove my makeup. You know, I rubbed it in, kept my eyes closed, and then when I opened my eyes, I still had a wing. And I was like, what the heck? The good news is, is that they freaking last. And they come in such a good variety of colors. They have neutrals from like a brown and a black. And then I bought all fun colors because I wanted to try them out and I've been getting into colored eyeliner a lot lately. So I have the shades Dying for Shoes, which is a red with shimmer, It Bag, which is a copper with shimmer, and Animal Instinct, with, which is a khaki with shimmer. This one is my favorite. This one is so pretty. It's the first one I bought. These are definitely worth checking out. I don't ever see anyone talking about them, but girl, girl. Go get you one. This is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. I'm in the shade Light Warm. I use mine solely for brightening. My goodness, this stuff is so pigmented. It is so opaque. It is like a one swipe and done kind of situation. Um, as I said, I don't use it for coverage, 
but if you need it for coverage, it'll cover. It will cover. Let me tell you, I don't, it's so creamy, it is so lightweight, <sighs> which I guess is why it's called the Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. It literally is all of that. It is not wrong. All right, I want to talk about three brushes just real quickly because um, they've been like staples and holy grails for me. Every single day I wear my makeup, I will use these three brushes. The first is an eye brush. This is the Morphe M504 brush. Perfect for blending out your eyeshadows. Not for precise blend blending work, but like for blending everything together and blending everything out. This has been my best friend and I couldn't imagine not having this for my makeup. It's amazing. And then the next brush, I think it's a Coastal Scents brush. I'm gonna double check. I've had it for so long and there's not a name on it, but it's a double-sided brush and one side I will use to highlight my cheekbones. It's like the perfect size. And then the next side I will flip over and I will highlight the tip of my nose and my cupid's bow. The e.l.f. stipple brush. This is my favorite stipple brush. My favorite duo fiber brush. It's got the right amount of bristles. This is what I use to blend all of my cheek products together when I get my blush, bronzer, and highlight on. I will go over it with this and this blends everything and meshes it all together and makes it look you know, cohesive instead of like color, color, color. I'm gonna get everything out of the way before I do lips because I have the most lips and I'm gonna try to hurry up because I'm at 18 minutes already. Okay, this is the Ula Henriksen Walnut Complexion Scrub. This is two-in-one cleansing exfoliator, walnut powder, Korean ginseng, and chamomile. I love this stuff. I invested in it and it's only 28 bucks, but I was using a really cheap exfoliator, but I like it's necessary in my skincare regimen. I need it to get like buff away any dead skin cells basically, which everyone needs it. This one says, this two-in-one foaming scrub deeply exfoliates and cleanses to purify pores and smooth the appearance of skin texture with ginseng, chamomile, and jet milled walnut powder. I would not recommend this if you have really, really acne prone or if you already have a lot of blemishes on the face, just because it is a physical exfoliator, it's not going to be gentle like an enzymatic scrub, which is something that you might look into if you do have a lot of blemishes on the skin. But if you do not suffer from that, I highly recommend this. And this makes my face feel like a baby's butt. It's good. All right, last, last, some lip products. And I got some lip products. The Bite Beauty Lipstick. It's from the Amuse Bouche line. This is in the shade Sugar Cane. These lipsticks are my favorite formula next to NARS Audacious that we sell at my Sephora anyways. They are so comfortable, long wearing, they do not dry out my lips. And this is the most perfect pinky nude. And it makes me so happy that Jaclyn Hill also mentioned this in her June favorites. Soulmates. Next are these Milani Color Statement Matte Lipsticks. They do have regular lipsticks, these are the matte, they're in the same packaging. But I wore Matte Orchid, which is this beautiful orchid color. I wore it at an eight hour shift at um, work one day and I only had to reapply a couple times. They're a little bit drying, which most matte lipsticks are, but it lasted so long and it wasn't that uncomfortable that I was just really, really impressed. I'm always looking for a good long wear lipstick because I hate touching up and I hate when it wears off in a really weird way. These Milani lipsticks come in several different colors. The matte ones kind of smell like like cake and then the original line smells like watermelon jolly rancher next are these maybelline matte lipsticks same situation as those bad boys i like these more they are super comfortable to wear these are my two favorite shades this is divine wine and touch of spice it's a really pretty deep red and a really pretty brownie nude. Again, really, really comfortable. They're not very drying on the lips. They last a good long while. These are my favorite lipsticks from the drugstore. So if you haven't checked them out, I think they're five and a half bucks a pop. You can't go wrong. And they literally have a million shades to choose from. So a couple lip glosses. I have been obsessing over Bite Beauty Rambutan Lush Fruit Lip Gloss. I bought this because of Amanda Enzing and I love it. It's like a peachy nude, but more nude. It's not sticky, which I love. It's comfortable, which I love. And it's really glossy, which I love. And then the next one is the Buxom Full On Lip Cream in White Russian. I've been wanting to buy this when Kathleen Lights raved about it, what, like a year or two ago? And this is a really pretty like pinky nude. Um, I use this if I want to make any lip color like a little bit milkier but I also use this on like a nude lip kind of day. And I do want to give a quick mention to Stella McCartney pop 
fragrance. This is a new fragrance released from Stella. And if you are a fan of fresher scents and sweet scents, you will love this. It's weird because it's like a fresh and sweet but tangy scent. I don't know how to describe it. So here it says the notes are tomato leaves, violet leaves, and green mandarin. Violet, tuberose, plumeria, sandalwood, cedarwood, musks. And the style is bright, contemporary, and positive. And I honestly hated it when I first smelled it, but I don't know what the hell it is. It smells so good. Go check it out. All right, last but not least, I want to give just a very, very quick mention to these sunglasses by Key Australia. These are in collaboration with Desi Perkins, who is a YouTuber. <sighs> All right, guys, that completes this video. I apologize if it's a million years long, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Uh, do I look shiny or greasy? Or high lady? Is it a good look? These lights are popping. Yeah.